What's up, everybody? Welcome to a, another wheelchair Wednesday here at the very windy wheelhouse. Should have called it Windy Wheelhouse Wheelchair Wednesday. It's a lot of W's. Uh, we got a special guest today that a lot of people might know. Uh, she's uh, she's been doing some stuff out there. She's been noticed. Um, before we get to her, I'm gonna go ahead and play a little video that she had done. Uh, but we're gonna try to get a couple people in here. This is a live show. So we're gonna do our best to try to get everybody in here before we get going. Oh, let's see. All right, let's hit it. Yeah, okay, you ready? Yes. For luck. Ready, one, two, three. Wanna say hi? Uh, Elon Musk called me. Let's talk about accessible transportation. Didn't count. All right, folks, welcome to another Wheelchair Wednesday. I am Wheelchair Rick, and today I bring to you a awesome person. We always have awesome people on here because it's it's just, I mean, to be in a wheelchair, you're, you're in a whole other echelon of, of people now. We have reached, you know, the tippy top. So before we get this person, I want to go ahead and hit this because welcome, Gina Shu. Thank you for being a part of this. How are you? I am fabulous. Fabulous. Can't complain. Awesome. Awesome. I've seen that thing on the... So the... the tell me about the whole um, Price is Right thing. How did that come about? That was just a last minute trip to LA. And I think everyone who is like between the age of 30 and 40, their bucket list item is like to be on the Price is Right. I mean, all of us. That's like what we dreamt of. Right. And so I was like, let's just go. I was with my caregiver. I'm like, let's stop in LA. I mean, why not give it a shot? And we actually got tickets. They happened to add a couple of shows. I got really lucky. And when I was there, they called me down, like literally the fourth person. And I was the first person to go up. It was, I, it was unreal. It was unreal. It was unreal. Yeah. Nice. I love it. That was awesome. Yeah, I watched uh, the stuff you shared, and I'm like, man, that is so cool to say that, you know, you did that. It's kind of like a bucket list type thing for a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah, and I definitely, I took the opportunity. So, like, the one thing, if anyone watches my stuff, they'll be like, oh, your shout-out. So, like, my shout-out was <laughs> Yeah. And it was like, call me about accessible transportation, you know. And um, I realized, like, I had a platform for a minute, and I had a national television platform. Right. And why wouldn't I take that opportunity? I call myself an advocate. Like that. I was going to say that's to advocacy advocate. at the most tippy, you know, 100%. Like, I'm, I'm out here. I can't get no more people to watch me. It's like, boom, I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what – and then when I finished – one of the producers was like, oh, we're probably going to have to cut that. And I was like, please don't. I asked. I had asked somebody. I'm like, please don't. Like, I really, I'm like, please don't. Right. Um, like, it's so important. Like, really, why cut that? Like, it's actually amazing that you guys are going to allow me to do that. And just like, you know, and they're like, okay, they, they will think about it. And well, like, and it's kind of funny, too, that you said Elon Musk, because, like, that kind of makes it comical. But, you know, like, it, it, it's comical as it is. It's actually doable, because that's the dude that would probably do it more than our own, you know, local and whatever. 100%. Government. Well, one of the things is a lot of people like don't realize like what a big crush I have on Elon Musk. Like most people, you know, we're mm -hmm. all like, oh. And I absolutely love him. But many, many years ago at the beginning, like early on with Tesla, he would write these like manifestos and it was like phase one, phase two, these ideas of like what he wanted Tesla to be. And I'll never forget in like phase one, he actually addressed accessibility in buses and things like that. You really literally wrote wheelchair access and for me to see that as a wheelchair user like I remember just being so encouraged by him because he didn't ha you know he has to sure but like 
he was talking about making it better, making the world more of it, like open to everyone. So that's why it's so funny, you know, something I read from him probably 10 years ago is what motivated me to yell at him at Price is Right. That is awesome. So, yeah, it was cool. It would have been more awesome if I won that showcase oh oh i know would you did you win anything on there you had to win something yeah i won a hot tub and massages for a year and i like pretty much gave everything away oh i did win a thousand dollars but after all the taxes i only got 97 bucks are you kidding me what the <laughs> hell is the point of going that oh my gosh <laughs> i had to make taxes i had to make taxes i gotta on. hit this real quick true but it's because i had to pay taxes on the hot tub and on the massages so it was like the whole thing yeah, i mean but you got to give them away which made somebody super happy i'm sure and you were like that, that right there is probably worth it and you got 97 bucks so you know what hey, that's a win that's a win in my I book yeah 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 yep. Um, that's a pretty can't complain all right well before we get into this, let's go ahead. That's the first question is that I always ask everybody. I mean, it's on the title. Um, what is your level of injury and how did it happen? Uh, okay. So I am a C5-6 quadriplegic. Um, and it happened when I was fighting robots on Mars. And I'm just kidding. I, I was about to say, to this is going to be sweet. I have a sucky story. I have a super sucky story. So I was just about to make something up that was really believable. <laughs> Can't be too bad. But, but I, uh, no, I dove into a swimming pool. I was 18 years old. I asked if it was deep enough to dive. The guy said yes. It was three feet deep. I heard my neck break. And I actually oh, went into God. spinal. Yeah, I was like awake for all of it. And so I went into spinal shock. So for those that don't know, C5-6 means no fine motor. So like no finger movement, but I have tenodesis, which is wrist movement. Hey, hey, <laughs> my wrist movement. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I just saw myself. I'm like, I look like I'm doing soldier boy. Snap it back. But, um, All right. And so, yeah, so I am, and I'm paralyzed from the breast line down. But I was at the edge of the pool and I had no clue what life was going to be after that you know i don't think a lot of people really understand i was 18 years old in culinary school thinking i was going to be a chef and um when i got out i knew, i i knew um the moment i knew i was paralyzed so uh it was when i was laying on my back and they were like i said call 911 i can't you know i was like i i just couldn't feel my body and i had asked one of the girls i said can you put my legs down and she said gina i already did so when you jumped in, you said you heard like your neck break. That must have been when you hit the bottom of the pool. How did you get up out of the pool? They pulled me out. Oh, I actually thought okay. I was going to die. I was like literally sitting there thinking of sitting, laying in the bottom. Of the, and then they were like, wait, she, at first I thought I was joking. And they're like, this is not a joke. And they pulled me out. And I thought I was going to die. And I tell people it was the most serene moment of my life life it's crazy to think about but duh all my body's releasing every dopamine it's got you know it's oh, like, yeah. like you know it's like okay this sucks so and then they pulled me out and then at that moment i knew i'm like right it's yeah that's gonna suck um my my first realization was i was in the hospital and the, the dude's like can you feel this and i'm like no and he keeps going like up and closer closer to my chest or whatever and he's like he's like yeah nope He's like, that's it is what it is, and I'm just like that. At point, I realized I was like, ah, oh, well, here we go. You know what I mean? Like, and hey. how long has it been for you now? Uh, my accident was on October 26, 2019. The, uh, so yeah. I just did three years. Yeah, and they say the third year is the worst, which it kind of was, but like, I don't know. I feel like I'm not like everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I I yeah. try to use it for for positive, and I'm trying to do what I can to stay positive. And luckily, I mean. I, I wouldn't be this way without my support system. You know what I mean? Like not, not only people that, that, you know, even people like you that come out here and do this with me, but like also friends and, you know, my lovely fiance and the kids and stuff like that. So, um, it's just, you know, any kind of help helps. Oh, 100%. I've been injured for 20 years now. And for me, wow. you know, I know I'm a dinosaur. Been down forever. But, I, so it's like I'm like my injury is almost old enough to drink. <laughs> oh, there but, you go. Uh, 
That's nice. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says that when you do it. I know, I should, right? So, uh, yeah, no, it's it's definitely uh, been, it's been a wild ride. For me, Seeing, I've seen a progression over 20 years that a lot of people haven't seen that are like newly injured. Uh, social media wasn't a thing when I was injured. People with disabilities didn't have access to transportation like really like we do now. Right. Um, not as many options. Uh, you know, and the visibility of disability was not there. And I would go out in public and so often be treated like you know i was stupid and it was just purely by the fact that i was sitting in a wheelchair and so now that rarely happens also like i rarely have people block me out of my wheelchair like vehicle because there's so much education so yeah, like yeah. it's been really exciting for me to see where the world has come in the last 20 years like it's very encouraging and it makes me wonder where we're going to be in another 20 like it's pretty cool. But so for me, when I first got injured, you know, it was more about, oh, wow, all these stereotypes that even I had that I had to like realize. I was like, oh, wow, I was pretty ignorant, you know, like, and, right. and then I, I took it upon myself to really educate the people around me because I thought, you know, my mom said to me when I first got injured, she said, Gina, you do not represent just yourself. You represent every person in a wheelchair and i was mm -hmm. like what she said you are going to be the first experience a lot of people have with someone who is a quadriplegic or in a wheelchair and they're going to remember every other person after that will base their first experience on you right and, and i really did not want that responsibility but i <laughs> took it to heart you know and she was so right she was so right um you know i my everything that I do impacts the person who comes after me. And I know that. And that's why advocacy has been so important to me. That's why I do my shout outs or that's why I do, you know, I legislated for things and I've pushed for issues. And that's because my disability, like when I got this disability, I became a part of the community that like I'm responsible to. And or so as I like to call I, it the wheelchair mafia. <laughs> yeah. And listen, we're gang gang, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. straight up. Like, you know, I have people hit me up all the time and they'll be like, hey, like just recently, um, I had a woman, she was like looking for catheters in a pickle in the area. And I got a hold of a couple of ladies that I know. And well, one of them, I was like, Dina, like girl, like <laughs> can you help this girl out? And she's like, ah, Adrian. And like, next thing you know, she has piss sticks. Yeah, the pistol. You know? Yay! Ooh. Nice. So like, but it's true. Like, that's like a big, you know. Like, um, I'm impressed by the people. We really do come through for each other, and I think that um, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I really appreciate the relationships that I've gained. Um, mm -hmm. I I wish I was walking. Hell yes. But like. You know, I hate to say it, but I I prefer the knowledge that I have gained from right. this. You know, so it's it's been a wild ride. You know, I ended up getting my law degree and like going to school after my injury and, and I did that because yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was married, divorced. Listen, I've done it all. I've traveled out of the country, like all the things that people were like, you can't do this. I was like, mm. you know, <laughs> like you don't know me. You right. Don't know me. Like, so, you know, I really, I have taken this on as like the ultimate life challenge. Mm -hmm. For sure. Hey, I just want to say right now, thanks to everybody watching, all our viewers. Ben Insider, Dave Jennings, appreciate that. Quad Life, he says C5 in the building. Blessings, everybody. It's happening. <laughs> Um, so the next, let me ask you another question here. We got 10 of them. We've been through one so far and I appreciate, no, we'll talk all day long, Ow. like about as long as you want to go. Um, but the next one I got is kind of, a, it's a weird one, but like what I mean by it, it's, I have it labeled as, as would you walk if you could? Now, what I mean by that was if you can go back to that day in the pool and you could stop yourself from being injured but then you would go down that path and the path you've chosen now will be n null and void. Would you do that or would you stay where you're at? You know, uh, absolutely I would. 
Brian Nagel says she's cute. Because I think I would be lying if I said no. Because Brian Nagel is as much as I can handle the challenge, I don't want it. Right. You know, you know, I would I much rather be running a marathon or running a the multi million dollar restaurant, like probably, you know, in a sense. Like, but it is an interesting question and to be honest, like after doing this for twenty years, you know, when I was younger and my injury I probably would have been like no, I'm so happy with the knowledge. No, <laughs> it's a pain. Okay? Right. Nothing about this is simple. Nothing about this is easy. Okay. No. Our lives are challenging and we are constantly fighting to live a normal, everyday, happy life. And I would definitely go back and I would walk again. And I would just pray that maybe I met a friend in a wheelchair that could teach me all the things. Right. Right. Well, I mean, and, and yeah. I think like the way you're putting it too is it's got a lot of truth in it too, because I mean, you, like you said, you're 20 years down, like you, you've been doing this, like you, you've served a life sentence in prison that most people have to send, you know what I mean? So it's like, you've already seen this life. You've done what you could. I mean, you still got plenty to do. Don't get me wrong, but like you would definitely be like, you know what? I would rather see where I would go as a kid just so I could grow up and have a normal life because me, I got, I mean, my happened when I was 33 years old. You know what I mean? So yeah. I got to I got to live my adolescence. I got to grow up and be 21. I got to do all that stuff. So um, as for me right now, I think like what I'm doing, it helps a lot of people. I would hope. You know what I mean? Like that's oh, my 100%. hope. Well, I think what you're doing helps people. And I think anyone who has, I think anybody who advocates for people with disabilities in general, like you're going to have that thought process of like, man, like, I wish I didn't have to deal with this or, you know, you're going to have those days. Right. And sometimes it's just, you know, a lot of times I think for me, it's more, I just wish I had a little more freedom, you know, because I am somebody that just wants to go, wants to get out, wants to be free, wants to have that ability. I rely on caregivers. Yeah. So, you know, you have to remember, we're not even talking about just like, Oh, just dealing with the disability. I'm sure if I was a parent, it would be very different. But I have to manage people all the time. Like I never, I'm constantly a boss. Oh, absolutely. Always, yeah. You know, so, you know, always managing people, hiring or firing and training, or whatever. And I'm afraid to fire anybody people. nowadays because nobody wants to work the job. So it's like, you got to keep what you can, you know? Yeah, I mean? it is, it's true. It's very hard to find people. But I will tell you this I've been very lucky. Um, because I'm able to pay well and I really do like I'm very big on having a positive work environment. I treat my employees like, you know, they're not employees. They're like part of my, you know, we're a team, you yeah, know, yeah. that's what I always say. Like, this is a team effort. You know, I'm flexible with you. I work with you. I want you to be happy, paid well, all of those things, you know, and they are very sensitive to me and they're great. And I am grateful that I'm able to do that. But that's one thing, you know, when you talk about it, it's years of doing that stuff that just gets kind of like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel you. I mean, I don't feel you, but I understand. I like, I luckily haven't, I haven't had to deal with that yet. So it's like, yeah. But I do, I do kind of understand where you're coming from because I know a little bit about having to, it's got to be done, right? It's got to be done this way. If you don't do it this way, it's not going to work out. You know what I mean? Um, my next question is, which Brian Nealis over here might like this. He, he mentioned earlier that she's cute on there uh, on Facebook. Uh, dating slash married. Let's talk about that. Divorced. <laughs> no, she flipped the hair. Divorced. Nice. Yeah, so I've been divorced for like 10 years. I got married um, about four years after my injury. Met him after, no, it was five years after. I was with him for five years. I think I, it was my marriage of, I just had to prove to people, because at the time it was like, I kind of felt like, oh my gosh, you know, people kind of made me feel like, will anyone love you? And I'm like, what? Will anyone love me? Like, so I think I kind of settled for somebody just to prove. And then I realized like, wait, oh yeah, people will love me. That's not my issue. Like, right. and um, I am dated. I had another four and a half year relationship. That was great. I can't say anything bad about him, but it just wasn't my person. But um, I am dating currently uh, just 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, it <laughs> is weird. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a human. Like, I'm sexually active. I mm-hmm. like, you know, I like men. I don't know. Like Quad um, Wife said, just getting comfortable is hard. Yeah, I actually love. I actually find dating quite easy. Like, I don't find it. I'm I'm very social. So like I'll go out and I can meet people and you know I do a lot I go to events I get out a lot I like to have fun but like one of my friends said to me recently he said I'm very picky and I'm like oh, maybe I am I think I am because um, I'm at a point in my life where I don't really I don't need someone like I've got a great group of people things like that but yeah. like having somebody that compliments my life would be amazing like so but I'm definitely not one of those people that's like desperate or like hates dating I think it's great and I tell everyone in chairs like get out there go date have sex if you want a one night stand have a one night stand like honestly like do all the things that everyone else is doing like do not restrict yourself like if you want to be a whore be a whore like if you don't want to get that out there yep (laughs) yeah but like have fun like be you i think um people with disabilities their sexuality is you know stifled so often because people are uncomfortable about it so when we are able to talk about it and be open about it i think you know obviously if anyone has seen some of my artwork not this stuff behind me but the other stuff oh no some of your stuff on the yeah the clip art that i use for the uh the thumbnail yeah it's interesting yeah it's very sexually explicit and people ask me, like, where does that come from? I'm like, my head, fool. Like, duh. <laughs> oh. I have a dirty mind. Like, I am, you have no idea. Hey, ain't well, nothing wrong with that now. It's all right. Yeah, I think I think people do have an idea. Anyone who knows me is like, oh, we have an idea. <laughs> um, but and it's because I was not going to allow society to strip that from me after my injury. I was like, oh, hell no. I am still a sexual being. Like, that is something I can still enjoy just fine, you know? And so that's been fine. But dating, I, I do find, you know, dating in the chair, the chair complicates dating, obviously. Right. I you know, because guys... You know, the stereotypes that I'm constantly fighting or, you know, the intrusive questions. It's always the same shit. Sorry. Uh, same thing. You know, it's just like repeat of, you know, can you have sex? Do you work? Oh, that's What's always your... you get that question. You get that what? question. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Like all the. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh. Um, and then they ask very intrusive questions about like literally, you know, can I you know, do certain things. And I'm just thinking, you wouldn't ask an able-bodied woman these questions, I don't think. Um, I don't understand why you feel like you should be asking me these questions. And that's why they bother me, because I'm like, if these are questions that you, like, just spouted off in the first 10 questions with every other girl, then I would be like, sure, whatever. But I know it's not. And I know part of me is like, well, that's a compliment. They're clearly thinking about having sex with me but uh right you know you get objectified a lot especially i think a lot of women in chairs you know we do a devos and all kinds of weirdos oh yeah, yeah. oh I've, I've heard some i've heard some horror stories in my days i mean my last short three years of being in chair talking to people i mean especially with females it's like oh my goodness i can't even imagine um and to okay. answer your question who was it kim uh no this is a non-alcoholic root beer Kim, this is not a beer. Um, so for my next question, I think, no, <laughs> um, what is your biggest pet peeve about being in a wheelchair? Um, access and parking. Like people are lazy as hell, and so everybody wants the parking. Everyone wants the benefit of disability without being disabled. So like. Let me use the parking. Let me take the low table. Let me take the big stall. Let me use all the things that are meant for somebody with a disability that's a wheelchair user. And yet they don't, they would never want this life, you know? And so like those things kind of irritate me. I get very mad when I see people that are very able-bodied, like using parking, because I can't 
use a regular parking spot because I have a vehicle with a ramp. Well, the parking is and, is the worst. Sorry, I just had to say that. Nightmare. It's a nightmare. So, um, you know, it gets abused so much. Those things. Or the service dog program. Shoot. No, like oh, that gosh, is, yeah. Like, it's such crap. It is. I literally was at a restaurant the other day and somebody walked by with their service dog and it licked me. Oh. Like, it licked me. And I was like, oh, and it was, ugh. it was so gross. It was one of those ugh, gross dogs. And I'm like, I'm at a restaurant. I'm like, literally about like at a table. Like now I'm like, now I gotta go wash. I have to like, gross, gross. Like, I gotta and go I wash just, myself. <laughs> you know, like, dog that just licked its a hole. Um, but you know, it's like those things I see. Um, that's a big pet peeve of mine. You know, just people uh, like abusing the privileges of. Yeah, yeah, and then also, you know, the stereotypes. I get really frustrated. When I do a lot of legislative work, I get really disappointed. And um, the disabled community is not really seen in a in a very positive light. You know, we're seen as a needy, demanding, pushy group that, like, is only supported by Democrats. You know, that kind of stuff. When I get more into the, like, deep, like, rooted issues of disability, um the fact that we don't work harder to be more bipartisan the fact that we're not more involved in legislation the fact that people with disabilities allow like a very small group of people to fight for everyone instead of getting involved themselves it gets you know that's something that gets discouraging you know you ask people come on come sign this do this you'll see them bitch and moan on facebook all day but god forbid they like have to sign a petition or reach out to their legislature right when in reality if just 100 or 200 of them would do it it would change the world for all of us so those things that pisses me off <laughs> <laughs> you know? nice. i like i did that yeah so that's where i am but um yeah that that is that, that that's those are my pet peeves <laughs> okay i mean it makes <laughs> sense nice. let me say something positive all right I well hold on we got plenty more yeah. questions here um Number five is what is something that you wish you could do now that you could before that you can't no longer do? I mean, that's, I mean, we all we all know. I mean, the number one thing that we all think about. But besides that, besides the, you, you know, yeah. Everybody, I mean, as soon as I asked that, I'm like, everybody's going to go for that. Why did I even make this a question? Like, that's got to be the one. You know what I mean? tennis riding motorcycles and cooking it's like i've always said okay. that they're I've like the trifecta that i'm like ee, 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 ee. but um yeah so like i kind of those are my those are my three being able to cook um before i still cook and a lot like and anyone who sees my stuff like you know i'm like I'm right cooking. but if you're cooking but, you're moving, like it's different because you got boom 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 yeah, boom. yeah like i have a hard time dealing with like large pieces of meat no no i'm just kidding but, uh, <laughs> oh. no but really i mean it i mean, it. I mean it there you go but i like that um so yeah i like yeah that, i definitely miss those things um, um well mine would be golf i like golf if, if, yeah they got these my buddy showed me well Here's the thing, like in a wheelchair, it's because it would have to be the power wheelchair, because you ain't going golf in no manual. There's no way. You have a golfing thing? What? You have a golf wheelchair. No, I know where you can stand up and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only certain courses have those. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. Thanks. I appreciate that. What'd you say? We need to get one for you. Let's let's. Well, because my permobile would get me to certain spots because this thing is a beast. It's I got an F three permobile F three. I call it Johnny Five. Um, mm -hmm. If you've ever seen the movie Short Circuit. Um, but yeah, okay. like my biggest thing is being able to swing. You're gonna have to do it with one hand because you can't because I can't stand up in this one. The golf ones you can stand up, and I haven't tried that yet. But I've also seen that they have like drivers um, that are normal drivers uh, that have a uh, cut like a little 22 cap like a bullet that you pick your range and then it's got a little thing that plunges out that hits the ball you just got to pick your range and push the button it goes pow and then shoots the ball out i'm like dude i want to try one of those that's not even real golf oh but still you're out there with no. your buddies you're playing the that's game i mean come on you no. got a handicapped already so it's you know come on. Come 
That'd be, we'll that'd be fun. Like, you can stand up before we do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'd like to see how my swing would be. Um, I got another thing on the back here. We've had a couple questions that were just introduced to us over time, so we kind of kept them. Um, what type of wheelchair do you use, and do you have a name for it? Oh, my gosh. I don't. I just got a new one, too. I have a tie, like, TRA or ZRA. I don't know. This one doesn't have it on it because I have it wrapped. One of the tie lights, a uh, rigid frame with twion wheels, but I'm hoping to upgrade to the Emotion if they'll ever be available. Um, but those are power assist. So, like, when I push, it, like, helps. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a semi-manual is what I – semi-automatic. <laughs> <laughs> semi-automatic. Uh, <laughs> pew, pew. But no, uh, so I, I actually have one of those. Uh, See, yeah, I sure did that. <laughs> these in my life. Can I just roll around with one of these? Like, I know, right? Just push the buttons all everywhere you go. I never let me come over. They'd be like, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. I'd be like, pow, pow. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, my, my chair, and then I have a Rojo cushion. I do a low profile uh, Quattro. I know a lot of people have been talking about cushions. Um, you they know, are a lot pretty of important to get a decent one that's going to, you know, stand important. up for you. Yeah, Rojo's, super expensive, crap warranty. They don't last as long as they should, but why they last, they're good. Mm. That's what I would say. Um, and you really don't have many other options. Uh, you know, people pay attention, pay attention. Like, it, some of the things, like, if I, being a 20 year old, you know, vampire. Uh, <laughs> I give people this advice, like, watch your ass. Yeah. Put up a mirror in your bedroom. Do not ignore it. It'll only get worse if you ignore these things. You know, check yourself for pressure. Make sure you drink enough water. Stay away from cigarettes. Stay away from sugar. Make sure you're getting fiber. Regularly do your bowel program. Cath regularly. Make sure you're fully emptying your bladder. These are all things, people. I was going to say, are you sure you're not some kind of counselor at a rehabilitation center or something? Because I've heard this before. But no, no, you're right. And the water, I think, is is a lot of people's biggest issue. None of us drink enough water, you know what I mean, that we're supposed to do. Um, and uh, another thing is fitness. That was what I was going to ask you. What do you do to, to stay up with fitness? What do you, what do you, you hit the gym? I go to the gym. Hell yeah, I go to the gym. I go twice a week. I have a trainer and like, I do like strength training stuff to like keep my like, you know, shoulders and everything. I stretch regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, Sleep Very on important. your stomach, people. Sleep on your stomach. I know it sucks. Really? And none of us Why? Do it at least two times a week because you need that for your hip flexors. We're constantly sitting. You're going to have issue, issues with scoliosis, with your hips, with stretching over the years. You know, lay on your stomach. Starfish out. Spread I sleep legs. on my side. Is that acceptable? Both sides. Yeah, but you're not. Like, do you go straight, though, or are you curled up? No, I'm straight up. Well, I do, uh, I do like, usually I'll, I'll have one leg. What I'll do is I'll take the blanket, I'll tuck it in between both knees, and then I'll take my knee, my one knee, and I'll kind of twist over and then twist my body over. So one leg is kind of, you know, triangle, the other leg straight out, and then I switch during the night. So I go to both sides plus my back. Well, how often are you, like, butterflying your legs, too? What do you mean butterflying? stretch to get that stretch Spread oh you mean out. like put my heels together and let them go out yeah. you know I do, I do that when I do like uh like I cut my toenails and stuff but I get stretched three times a week I have a caregiver that comes in and he comes in and does stretches yeah every day I do it every day twice a day in the morning and at night I wake up in the morning I stretch at night I stretch those are the things like honestly like it's our bodies are we are asking so much of them like we ask so much of them and it's like we got to remember we got to treat them right but like you know a lot of these people with spinal cord injuries are always like why do i have utis and why do i have wounds and i'm like first off like 50 percent of your diet is sugar yeah. and bacteria bacteria actually like eats glucose sugar it's like that's what it requires um and then nicotine is an inhibitor of healing so you know, there's people out there and they're like, they can't figure out why they can't get these pressure sores cleared up or things like that. Well, they're not drinking water. They're eating a lot of sugar, smoking cigarettes, doing things like that. And it's 
literally like will keep you from progressing you yeah. know and it just i'm glad i gave up cigarettes i really didn't have a choice but oh. I'm, i feel so much better now like even though i got a metal rod through my back being connected to my spine like i still feel like i can breathe a little better even though i have half my lung function is that one of the things that when you figured out when you was in the hospital that you couldn't breathe like correctly and like you were trying to catch your breath that was like a nightmare for me i'm like oh my god like i had to stop myself from panicking because i was like i started remembering how i could breathe and how i can't breathe now so you feel like you're like oh i'm suffocating but like once you get over that and you kind of train your brain like chill out bro like you're gonna be okay just calm down yeah but then i still now have like world's tiniest sneezes i'm like Achoo! like you know <laughs> the sneezes ah. all right Oh, Brian Nealis, but thanks also, for that comment. We'll let her check that out later. Oh, what was that? Word? Oh, nothing, there, huh? nothing big. Uh, next question is, any pain? Um, I smoke a lot of weed, so that helps, like nice. a lot. Uh, I don't take any prescription medications. I don't even know the last time I took an Advil. Um, my pl pain fluctuates, but I have such a high tolerance too. So, like, I'm not a good person to ask when it comes to that. I'm like, I don't know, probably, like. I ache, but I just, I focus on so many other things. Like, you know, you don't let it run. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't pay attention to it really. You're just like, whatever, go ahead and hurt them. And if I do think about it, it's worse. Like, and I know that like, you know, if I focus on it, if I think about the fact that like, oh, my back aches or, you know, and then next thing I know, like, it's just so much worse. So I find uh, the best thing I do for myself medical marijuana because that reduces my spasticity and helps with my pain and then um staying on stretching keeping my weight down eating a healthy diet like i notice when i don't eat right like my body will hurt i actually went on a road trip recently and i like ate fast food at the beginning oh god I, that's something we all got to work on now you're gonna make me feel bad because i'd live off that shit sometimes but i never i'm not a big fast food person and i ate something and my body was on fire all day like i was like whoa what is up i'm like oh it's the food like you know and i think we discount really how important food is in our in well our and there's lives. not they're not giving us real food i mean we're, we're eating like byproducts of food and there might be a little bit of food in the food but it's it's mostly just like it's not i mean don't look into it folks it's going to be bad trust me you're not going to want to eat fast food ever again but it's I, I think like uh you know even being out here since we moved out here in the country we've been trying to eat more like greens and more vegetables and more stuff like that and it does it does it helps your uh you know helps your everyday feeling it helps your your just your mindset i believe and not only that but your body once you start feeling better and i'm not the healthiest person at all don't listen to me but neither um, am i i'm the first one to tell you like i love a good whiskey and i can't turn down a pace like, well, you got to come to the wheelhouse then. Shoot, we're going to put you on one of these Rick and Rowdies. You can get along just fine. You guys, oh my gosh, just wait. You guys keep up. I want to see. Um, oh, so just in um, case people didn't know, she's the first donator to the Heat the Wheelhouse Foundation, Miss Gina. She's got her name up there. Yep, she's on there. She's, she's forever going to be uh, shown at all the different things. Um, real quick, my next question, number seven, is what, ha what helped you the most um, after your injury? What was the biggest help you think? My family, honestly, like you talked about support. Mm -hmm. It was, I literally had just 10 out of 10 support system um, and finances. I'm not gonna lie. Like I know a lot of people, they act like, you know, oh, it's not just about money. No, it's about money. Like if you have money, that's gonna be a big game changer. And my dad was able to help me get a vehicle. I was able to go to school. Like these were all things that, you know, and I, that's a huge, and I'm able to pay for my own care. Um, those are the two big things that I think really differentiate between someone who has major success as a spinal cord injury afterwards and somebody who really struggles. Right. Um, and those are the two things. Yeah. Nice. Um... I agree with you on that one too. Um, it sucks. I, I think it's actually. And we won't get into it because it, it's to me it, it sucks because you know I, I actually have very good insurance and I feel bad for the people that don't or that that their circumstances didn't afford them to use that insurance or whatever it might be. Um, but it does. It it all depends on what you're what you're available to get and what you can afford to get or what you know what I mean like 
to help you but it's like i only had it because i had this or whatever you know what i mean so i tell everybody like if you're gonna be going out and living crazy even if you're not if you're just a person that drives your car to go to the grocery store get full coverage on your vehicle um there's a lot in michigan they have a thing now where you can opt out and pay way less uh just to get plpd which ain't gonna really do much you know even less than that but it's like pay the full coverage because you might not need it but one day you might, you know what I mean? And I'd rather have it not need it than need it not have it. So, and the only reason I had it is because we had a new car we had to pay on. Um, what we got here? Bob says, afternoon, fellow Americans. Listen as I paint my countertops. Cheers. Cheers, Bob. Good to see you. Kim said, getting on the stomach to listen to you both. Oh, look at you. You convince her to switch right over right now. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm proud of you. You'll be so happy you do it. Trust me. You right. Know. Now you got me wanting to try it out now too. Um, oh, I'm gonna I have do to do that. that. Also, like, do the yoga stretch. Like, press yourself up so you're stretching your back. Yeah. You know, we are all. All of us have this like potential for scoliosis. You know. Oh yeah, that's Especially, what they told me I had already. Oh yeah, it's common among spinal cord injuries because especially people who. Uh, our cervical levels or high thoracic levels, you don't have that stomach con trunk control to keep you straight. So what happens is you kind of re re or whatever, which way you want to go. So by stretching, you can correct those things. Like if you really, if you start seeing that, if you catch it early on, now if it gets really bad, you know, there are some people like, obviously surgery is the only thing that they can do and things like that. Yeah. But that's why I tell people like, Watch these things. Stretch out your toes. I know this sounds crazy, but like, as you go, it's harder to wear shoes later in your injury if you let your toes curl up. You're more prone to pressure problems. Like, oh, stretch yeah, them yeah, out. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, little things like that. These are all little, I mean, these are things that people don't think about. That every day, you know, we got a little extra time. It sucks, but you know. That's going to help you out in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, my next question to you is number eight hobbies, uh, before and after the injury. Tell us about that. Um, they're actually pretty similar, which is funny. Uh, sports is not, I don't get to play sports like I did before. So, but before and after I still, I love to paint, obviously right. a lot of you can see artwork behind me. Um, and if you want to check out my artwork on Instagram at inside genus head, we're going to have all uh, those links see. after this live. We're going to put it in there. We don't have anything live right now because once we go live, we just go live. And then afterwards, we had everything in. But go ahead. Sorry. I love it. That's great. Okay. So um, I do painting and I love to cook and I love to travel. Like I really, I feel like travel for me is like really my happy place. It's, it gets me out seeing the world. And like, even though I'm restricted from doing certain things, like it just reminds me like how much I am able to do. And like the exposure is like such a beautiful thing, especially like I went to Costa Rica and I'm like, Oh, okay. I know I always brag on the ADA, but like, <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, but it also like makes me come back and be more appreciative, but it also makes me come back and fight more for us to be better. Yeah. You know, because I do think I go other places and I see their accessibility even better than us sometimes. And I'm like, huh, why can't we do that? Yeah, I've you heard know? some of those vacation spots are like, like the whole freaking place is just absolutely accessible. No matter where you want to go, you can get in. And then in America, yeah. you go right down to our main, you know, any main city. And it's like, oh, sorry, we can't let you in because we don't have, you know, a ramp. Or yeah. And the reason that is, and this is me, this is, this is the... This is the advocate the coming out? Speaking. Yeah, this, this is the jurist doctor speaking. So the, the reason that is, so the Americans with Disabilities Act, which many of us are very familiar with, um, is a flawed law, in my personal opinion. And that is because it is unlike any other law in the U.S., you know, the police or an agency, a government agency regulates it. This is a law where they actually put regulation and and the expectation of knowing these codes on the person who is being discriminated against. Right. So they expect people with disabilities to be the police officers. And they continue to put up more and more barriers for those people to get access into these buildings and to get these changes made because they want a notice period or things like that. And 
they're wanting a group of people who are traditionally undereducated to know a very complex law and to be able to demand what their rights are. It's Oh, the BS word. I know what you mean. I was going to hit the bleep button, but we don't have one of those. But no, um, I'm glad that we have somebody like you doing that. And and I know a couple other people that I've talked to off of camera and stuff um, that are just like super, super helpful and inspirational. And they go up there and they like, they're like, listen, you're going to listen to what we're telling you because it has to change. In Michigan, especially, there's stuff that's just... It's horrible. People are getting out of grandfather laws, and it's just like they're they're declining their 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 work and the helpers. And like, I myself have had different you know care working companies that had to quit because it no longer paid them because of their stuff. And it's just, you're right. The laws that have been set are not really made for us. They're made for the pockets of other people. And I think that now we're p- people are trying to make it better. And uh, there's a lot of things you know that's yeah, in the I- works, but. Tells you grandfather, you got to tell them that is nowhere in the ADA anywhere. That is actually not a real thing. So if any business ever tells you to grant their grandfather in, you can tell them, actually, that's not a real thing. So right. you have to offer reasonable accommodation. Yeah, their biggest um, thing is Michigan. I don't know how it is in other states, but it, like if if um, if the building is so old and they're not doing any renovations they don't have to touch it but the minute they start doing any renovations which means anything putting in an air conditioner replacing a window mm-hmm. anything they have to make that accessible um and that's yeah, and yeah. Also, they're required to offer reasonable accommodations even if without certain things and so that's what a lot of people but like here in arizona they got a law passed through that you have to provide notice they have 30 days to cure and things like that so you're expecting people who like have trouble with transportation getting to that place in the first place to be right. able to go back and provide you know it's just it's a pet peeve of mine i've actually been thinking i've been thinking strongly about running for state rep next year and i think my platform is going to be care infrastructure and access um, Do it, because- <laughs> yeah i dig it i'd vote for you if yeah. i was in arizona Hey, move on out. Uh, I know, right? It'd be warmer, yeah. that's for sure. It is. We'll bring it with it us, is. Jody and Ben. Let's go. Woo! Yeah, let's go, everyone. Yeah, I found an extra room. <laughs> William, but, um, no, I'm- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, oh no, William! Uh, if you he was asking about the dating, we actually just covered that back on what was that? Question number five, I think, four or five. It's back in the thing. If you want to rewind and go back, it's back there. Um, but no, go ahead. What was you saying, Gina? Oh, I don't even remember. But you just cut out just a little bit right then for a second. So hopefully, I think every on question number five, I think is what you said, right? Yeah, question five or four. It's back there a little bit. You can rewind. Um, yeah, our, our internet's crazy. Like I said, it's windy out here today. Hopefully, we don't see no tornadoes. Michigan is not famous for them, but I mean, they're everywhere nowadays. You never know. Um, the next question I got for you is the second to last one is travel yes or no you've already kind of answered this uh tell us about that oh my gosh yes 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 yes. yes. <laughs> you guys don't be afraid like i know you can make almost anything work like honestly and if people you know how many people have told me i can't do things that i've done like i i was on a travel group and i'm like hey i'm gonna travel and like next week and I'm planning I want to go either out of the country or um like I don't know yeah I was thinking and somebody says oh you can't you're you're in a wheelchair you can't do that in less than a, you can't plan all of that in less than a week I said what I play and then sure enough I left five days later and I did an Alaskan cruise where I actually ended up breaking my leg that was just a mess but um, I, yeah, I love travel. I actually plan to do a lot more international travel over the next few years. Um, I think it's a great thing. I think it's really good for us. I have a really funny travel story, actually. Um, and this is a tip. So people, if you are doing travel, you're gonna do international travel, make sure that you have a prescription um, from your doctor and like a list of your like medical supplies. Because when you're going through customs, so when I went through, I was with my friend from law school and my caregiver, and my friend is now like a high-powered attorney in California. She's a ball buster. I love her. Nice. And we go through, and she had a banana, and they're like, oh, uh, you have a banana? And so we stop, and then the lady sees 
sees my catheter. So my catheters start coming through and she, she stops me and opens up my bag and she pulls out, um, one of my, you know, she's going through and she's like, what is this? And I'm like, uh, para los baños, you know, for the bathroom. Like, and she's like, we're gay. Like, no, like, because they have a little like lubrication pack on the inside. Right. And so she's thinking like smuggling and drugs or whatever. But meanwhile, she had picked up my vitamin gummies, which are my edibles. Oh, and I'm shoot. just like, oh my gosh, she's holding my weed. She's holding my weed. Like, the lady, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yelling at me from a catheter, holding my weed in this one, yelling at me with the catheter in this one. Like, what is this? This is, and I'm telling her it's for the bathroom, and she's like, doesn't believe me. And so I said, fine. I'll just piss right here. Oh, and shit. I pull out my shirt. I swear. I'm like, I don't care. I'll just be right in the middle of the airport because I have a, my drop out so I can, like, I have a stoma so I can just, like, pop it in right there. So I pull it up. She sees my stoma. She freaks out. She's like, no, 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 no. Like you got a bomb goes, or something, right? <laughs> and the other guy goes, let her go. Oh, my so gosh. my marijuana and my catheter back in my thing, zips it up on my way. Nice. That's my story. That is a hell of a story. I'm gonna <laughs> give you one of these because we're just gonna. I've used this button more times than I've ever used it in this interview, and it was well worth it. Um, I like it. Last but not least, uh, this question I think is probably one of the most important ones. What is the best piece of advice you could give somebody that's brand new injured, just newly injured, laying in that hospital bed, watching you on a hospital TV right now? What would your best piece of advice give to that person? Don't be discouraged. You know, I think it seems so overwhelming, but it's so possible to like manage and live a very fulfilled life. And attitude is everything. You know, you really are, even though you feel like you're not in control, you're in so much more control than you'll ever realize. You know, it really is you, it's your attitude, it's how you treat your body, it's how you treat the people around you. You know, to have good friends, you have to be a good friend. And that means to your body, you know, if you want your friend to be a body, you have to be a friend to your body, you know? And it's just, even the people around you, it's all so much in all up to you. You know, don't blame the people around you, don't get angry that's the worst thing this is a situation that you're in and you make the damn best of it like you have a choice to either be happy or sad yeah who doesn't really 50 50 right i remember taking i remember making that decision yeah and i think a lot of us are uh, we remember that moment that we chose i I don't want to be like that you know we met someone that was bitter and angry and disabled and hated life and we were like (gasps) Ooh, I don't want to be that. You know, that was like my thing. Like I wanted people, I'm social. I am, I love people. Like I freaking love people. Even the assholes, I love them. They make it fun, you know? Oh yeah. Like I love people. So I didn't want people, you know, I don't want to push people away. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be unhappy. Like, and I don't want to make it all about me and my disability. You yeah. know, like as much as it is, I know it is, but they hang out with me day to day life like I'm not sitting there talking about the ADA and all this I'm talking about talking trash about stupid funny things you know like everyone else so yeah I would say don't get discouraged like remember like how incredible you if you you've got your brain you've got everything yeah for sure and I've um, when I was in my rehabilitation I was actually next door to a brain injury patient and he was young I mean he was really young and it kind of for me it brought into perspective like you've been sitting here bitching about your injury and look at this kid just came in lost everything you know damn near and who knows if he's ever going to get better or be able to talk normal again like so that I mean that was one of the points where I was just like shut up and let's do this and get it done because luckily I was in a, a rehabilitation called Mary Freebed. I don't know if you ever heard of those, um, but they no. call it like it's like a. I literally the first day I woke up, I'll never forget. Her name was Amy, and she was one of the head nurses. And she looked down at me and she says, "Well, or hello, good morning, welcome to boot camp." And I was like, uh, "Okay, whatever, you know." And then, but now the rest of that day, she did. 
she was right it was boot camp they put you right in there they get you ready for it right away you know what i mean yeah so um yeah how long were you in the hospital um i went to i forget when i went to mary free bed i think i went there um before christmas so it was like in november end of november but i was in the hospital pretty much i didn't get out until january 9th is when i came home so from october 26th to january 9th is when i was away that's amazing yeah i was in october 11th and i came home the day before christmas and they sent me home on like 25 different medications and we were unwrapping and i literally i was in a halo after my injury um and i i'll never forget this it was like we were at my grandma's and this is like the day after and everyone's all depressed because here i am sitting there all crippled and i'm like <laughs> sitting there all, all right and um and now now my family they we all make we're, we're just a big jokester we're a group of jokesters but um and i was sitting there and everyone's opening up presents and this is after we ate you know and so i had taken all my medication that i didn't know anything about at the time i just took what the doctor told me to take And I'm sitting there. Next thing I know, I wake up. The room is empty. Nobody's there. And I go, Mom? (laughs) And she goes, and she pops around the corner. And she goes, oh, you're awake. I passed out because I was on a bunch of Tizanidine. Oh, man. (laughs) Hey, Quad Life said earlier, how do you feel when you take an edible? I mean, probably like anybody else Uh, feels, but. Oh, I mean, I listen. I I'm an elephant when it comes to the amount of edibles that I can eat. Like, <laughs> like, that ain't doing nothing. Yeah, I, no, my I I don't even like personally. I don't feel like I have like a really like head high when I smoke marijuana. But um, I don't do a lot of edibles. Um, but I do a lot of cartridges because it's easy to manage, easy to use, and I can like figure out the dosage. Like some edibles, I find even though. I like to think that they are more regulated than they are. I find that they kind of fluctuate yeah, oh yeah, in milligrams. Sure. Yeah. So like, I don't, I don't feel like I can control it as much and I don't mind that, but, um, and they're expensive in all honesty. I mean, more yeah. than anything. I took them to sleep and, yeah. um, I've noticed even like without them, I can sleep decent, but I just have to stay up a little longer and it's like, I don't know for somebody like I mean me like my mind's always going I'm always wanting to do something I can't ever just sit there so it's like for me to kind of like lay back you know hit a joint a couple times and then take an edible I'm guaranteed sleeping all night long you know I mean I'll get up to do my turns but um you know it just depends and you're right they do fluctuate depending on the brand oh yeah oh yeah you never know too and like but I, I tell everyone, like, you know, I've had a lot of people with spinal cord injuries be like, oh, I don't know if medical marijuana is for me. And I'm like, it's not for everyone. It really isn't. Like, um, but I also don't think that all these medications that everyone's taking is for everyone either. I'm actually, I'm pretty anti-med. Um, only if you really need it. Like, I will not take antibiotics unless absolutely necessary because you know i am so aware of people getting these antibiotic resistant strains to things and if i were to go through a later spell where i'm having issues with utis or things like that i don't want to set myself up to being like already immune to these things so like for me and i've seen because you know when you're i've seen patterns like i know what kills people in chairs like i've seen you know i've been around for 20 years i know what it is right um and it's infections and it's pneumonia but it's mostly in fact 45 50 years in a chair and never had a pressure sore never had a uti you know it's possible 